Welcome everyone. Well, as you can see, I apologize, but I didn't unbox the chicks on video. It was, I was feeling pretty urgent. They were supposed to get here yesterday and got the call today at 5 a.m. So basically they've been in the box for 24 hours and I know that they're okay to do that, but I was still nervous. So just got everybody in the brooder and everybody's underneath getting warm, except for this little guy who's venturing out or got lost and couldn't find where the brooder plate is. Um, but let me show you how they come. Let's talk about how they came in the mail. So as I said, I got a call from the post office first thing this morning. They come in a box just like this. And that's really it. They're underneath. It's pretty interesting. They've got um, like a, you know, those hot hands you would buy when you're working outside or for sports. There's like a big one underneath that help, helps keep them warm and radiates heat up through this nesting material. And that's really it. Um, what, once they're hatched, they can survive for a couple of days just on the yolk that they've absorbed from being in the egg. Um, so pretty interesting stuff. So we've got three that are venturing out. This little one over here is a bantam, a true bantam. This is a Millie Fleur du Clay. This black one is a French black copper Morans. And the little chipmunk, I have to see the other one. There's two that look like that. One is gonna is an olive acre, and the other is a crested cream leg bar. Um so we'll see. I have to see them together because one it, the crested cream leg bar has a teeny tiny little poof barely noticeable on the, the head. So basically what I did was we took each chick out of the box one at a time. I checked them for pasty butt, which I wasn't expecting to see because usually you get pasty butt with chicks when they're too hot. So I was not at all worried that that was gonna be an issue here, but checked anyway. And then what I did was I just touched their beak to that nipple drinker and you watch, you wanna make sure you see them swallow. And that's really all it takes to teach them how to drink and where their water is. Um, you, but you wanna make sure you do see them swallow. So you just touch their beak to that. And then I immediately put them underneath the heater. Um, I put a little bit of food on this paper towel just so that it would get them to start eating. Um, and these are the first three that are venturing out. Like we literally just put them underneath the, the brooding plate and these three are venturing out and that's a good sign. Everybody else is underneath getting warm and I'm looking at that feeder <laughs> thinking that one brick might be too high right now for the little bantams. So we have to figure out a different solution for the little bantams because we've got four of those. Boy, are they feisty. That's good. I've been the bucket list chicks right there. There's the other one. So we've got two Millie Fleur du Clays, and I have really been wanting them, and I'm praying that they are our girls because we can't have roosters. Um, so we ordered from My Pet Chicken, and as you probably all know, there it's really difficult to sex chicks with 100% accuracy. But my pet chicken was the only hatchery I could find that did offer chick sexing for bantams. Um, all the other hatcheries I could not find any any options for um, ordering females. Ooh, you're venturing really far. Um, so, and they have a money back guarantee. So there's no guarantee these are girls. They did their best and we'll see what happens. But I'm really happy to see how feisty they are. <laughs> and that's, oh, and the black one, yeah, I think I told you the black one is the French black copper Marines. Um, so anyway, 
So we'll see what happens. We've got these guys out here and then underneath the brooder plate, we've got a Splash Moran's. Um, we've got a Silky in there. Oh, are you gonna get a drink? Let's see if you can reach that drink. You guys are feisty. That's good. And what else do we have in there? We've got a Black Frizzle Cochin, which we have a 50-50 shot of it frizzling. Hopefully it will. Let's get that off of there. You don't need that on there, just the food. Um, so let's hope it frizzles. And what else? Oh, we've got a Buff Lace Polish. That one's super cute. It'd be nice if they start coming out to venture out a little bit. <laughs> They're so cute. So you can imagine what we're going to be doing with our day. And perfect timing. The kids just got off of school yesterday. It was the last day of school. There you go. Oh, come on. I may have to show you guys again. If that's your drink. Well, here, maybe I'll do that. I'll show everyone. Yeah. All right. Here, come here. So what you want to do is you just want to touch their beak. There you go. Then you get one curious chick. There you go. See? And they kind of teach each other. Look at that. Now it's a party. Party at the drinker. Now the good thing is now that these three know what they're doing. Look at this one's coming over. Hey, guys, what are you doing? What are you doing? Perfect. That's exactly what you want to see. Because now once the others venture out, they're going to see what these guys are doing and they'll repeat that behavior. So it's exactly what we want to see. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about the drinker. In years past, I've always used an open drinker because I just, you know, it was a chick drinker. You bought it at the feed store when you brought them home and um, that's what I, that's all I knew. And uh, it was suggested, I saw some a video where it was suggested, suggested how nice nipple drinkers are for keeping the water clean. Um, so what I did was I got this nipple drinker, so we'll see how this goes. I can already see I'm going to have to put a drip pan below it. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, so we'll have to mess with that. But what I did is anytime I get chicks, whether... Uh, I've always gotten them at the feed store, but even this time, hey, 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 there's Penny. Um, that first week when I first bring them home, I make up a gallon of water with four ounces of nutri -Drench, and I mix that up, and that is their sole water source for the first week. Just to give them that little extra boost, and this time I feel it's even more important because they've, you know, been under that stress of being in a box with no food, no water for two days, being jostled around. And I don't know, that, that has to be stressful. So um, this, this time it's, to me, it's all the more important to make sure that I give them that new drench. I've got to find a drip pan for them. They're going crazy, they're really thirsty. Uh, yeah, let's see if you can get you yahoos out. Let's see what you guys are doing. There they are. Oh, look. Let's see. Monkey see, monkey do. Oh, no. Let's not do that. Uh-uh. That's the little splash Moran's. You want to stay in there. Go look at your friends. What are your friends doing? What are they doing? Okay. Come on, little Mr. Coochin. Let's get you over there, too. And everybody's like, oh, what is that? It's a party at the drinker. Here. Seriously? Let's see what your friends are doing. Here. There. 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 Oh, yeah. That's good stuff. Look what your friends are doing. Okay, so we've got Polish over there. There's the Polish. Yeah, guys. Yeah, you don't look so good, actually. Come here. I know, I know, it's stressful. Let's get you some water. I know, I'm stressing you out even more. Okay, come here, it's okay. Here, oh, come on. There you go. Okay. Come on, Silk. 
No, even I know you don't like this fish. You need to get a little bit of drink. There you go. Okay, it's a party. All right, let's put the heater back in and see if the little one's still back under there again. Yeah, she's still there. Okay, we're going to put the heater back in and see if the little one's still back under there again. any I'm not so sure about this Polish. Everybody else looks super alert. The Silky's kind of hanging out too, but it's been traumatic. Let's see what happens. Okay, see? Look at, look at your sibling. Get in on it. Here. Alright guys, let's get it the Polish a little bit more. Good, good time, pecking around. Hey, hey. Hey. So this little guy is a buffalo pinkton. are feisty. Yay! Here is our frizzle cochin. That one's a bantam as well. Chickies. We'll check in with them later and once they're settled, hopefully this Polish is doing better and moving around better. I'll keep an eye on her. Whoa. I hate putting those paper towels there. So what I did was, let me tell you about that. Um, I sprayed a little bit of feed on the paper towel just to get them eating. Um, and the idea was to, man, you're so not steady on your feet. Um, help them figure out where the food was and hopefully it will also draw them towards the feeder. But I think what I'm going to do since the bantams are so little is initially, I think I'm going to take it off the brick, the feeder off that brick. Yeah, that's going to be so I'll take that up um, so that they can get to it easier. We'll see what I think we'll do. So thanks for joining. Check in with us later. See how the Chickies are doing. We'll probably go live on Facebook here in a little bit. And we will keep you up to date. But there's getting your, introducing your chicks into your brooder for the first time. And I'm sorry I didn't do it, uh, record it, but they, we replicated it. So that's how you do it. And then you, after, I think I told you, after you dip their beaks and make sure they swallow, you get them right under the heat. So this is a really good sign that they're all venturing out from under the heat. So until next time, thanks so much for watching. Bye.